Next.js 15 has three different architectures for data fetching and data caching. Do you know what they all are? And are you on the right one? Let's find out right now. All right, so this is the example project that we are going to run in three different versions. It's basically a simple e-commerce store. You've got the front page here that's got the list of products, kind of video game themed, and then you can go into a product detail page where you can buy that particular product. We've all seen this a million times before. Now, what we're going to drill down into in this video is how to cache the data that builds these pages. We actually have different caching requirements for each of the pieces of data. Now, there are actually nine different queries that build this page. There's the slash products query. We only make that once. That gives us the list of products, but doesn't give us any details about the products. So once we've got those four products, we then make four individual requests to slash product and then the ID. And that gives us back the image, the description. It doesn't give us back the price. So then we have to make a subsequent set of four requests to slash product, ID, and then price. Let's go over and take a look in the console and you can actually see this happening. So here in the console, I can see the API server. If I hit refresh a few times and I go back to arc, hit refresh, we can see that just requesting that page once does nine different requests to the API, and that's not great. So let's talk what, about our caching requirements. What we'd like to see is the slash products route only get fetched about once an hour, because our list of products doesn't change that often. Our product information changes a little more frequently, so maybe once every couple of minutes, and then the price, we always want to get the price, we never want to cache that price. And then over on the details page, we have a related products request, and we also want that one to be cached hourly. Now what we're looking at here is a Next.js 15 pages router variant of this example. So this is all built on top of the pages router. So let's go see what our options are in terms of caching this page and all of its requests. So the directory we're looking at right now has an API server in it. That's the API server that we've been dealing with so far. It also has the pages variant application. So that's pages variant. And then within that, we're going to take a look at source, pages, index, and that's going to show us our home page. Now, our home page goes and gets the data in classic pages fashion using get server side props. Get server side props is going to get run every time you request the page. It's going to first go and get the products. Then it's going to get the product detail about each product. And then it's going to go and get the price for each product. And then that's going to return the props over to the home component, which is then going to render them. Now, if we take a look back on the page, we can see that there's slash products and then zero seconds. And that zero seconds tells us that this data was requested zero seconds ago, which means that we're always requesting data from the server. So is there a way that we can avoid that? Well, sure. The pages router gives us exactly one way of doing that, and that is to turn this page, this home page, into a static route. To do that, we change get server side props to get static props. Now we can see if we hit refresh, we can see exactly no difference. And that's because get static props only takes effect if you actually build and start the app. So let's do that. Let's go back over to our pages app and then we'll do PMPM build followed by PMPM start. Now, once it's built, we can take a look up here and we can see the route map. And the route map tells us that the slash route has a filled in circle next to it. And that tells us that as an SSG or static page, that means that it is at build time computed that page and that's the same page that it's always going to render unless we do an incremental static regeneration or isr request to revalidate that page so let's go and check this out now as we re refresh we can see that the day is 44 45 46 seconds old and that includes products and that's actually fine we want to cache that for up to an hour so that's okay but now the products are actually probably getting pretty stale here so yeah, we've gone past a minute on products. We should probably go and refresh that. But of course, the really bad thing is that the prices are actually all cached. And so if I go back over to my API server and I change one of these prices, let's say let's bump the console up to $5.99. Now, if I hit refresh here, it still says $3.99 because again, this is statically cached. But if I click on that, I can actually go over to the live data and see that we're getting 599. So that's not great. We've got a disparity between those two things. But unfortunately, the pages router gives us really no tools beyond ISR to handle revalidating that page. 
And if we do revalidate that page, then all of the requests go again. So we don't have the ability to granularly control the caching on the page. We can't say that this data should be cached at this level and this data should be cached at that level. We only get the ability to cache the whole page. So now let's go take a look at the app router variant, the second way to do data fetching and data caching in Next.js 15 and see, can we do better? Can we get better granular control over the caching? So go back into our cursor. I'll stop the pages variant and go to the 15 standard variant and it'll run that. And when I say standard there, what I mean is that this is the released version of Next.js 15. If you don't change the version to the Canary version, this is the version of Next.js 15 that you're gonna get. All right, let's go and hit refresh on here. And now I can see that again, everything is at zero or one seconds, meaning that we're making those nine requests out to the server every time we do a page fetch. So let's see if we can get better caching. Now let's go take a look at the code. And in the products.ts file, we have all the little helper functions that call those API endpoints. Now we got get products here, that gets the list of products. So let's cache that. So by default with Next.js 15, these fetches are uncached. With Next.js 14, all of the fetches were aggressively cached. So this time we actually have to ask for a cache. So let's do that. Let's ask for a cache and then let's bring up the options. We get all kinds of options, but we're going to choose force cache to just say, you need to cache this. And then we're going to say, well, how long for? To do that, we use the next key and then we say revalidate and we give it the amount of seconds we wanted to cache for. So if we wanted to be cached for an hour, then we say 3,600 seconds. All right, let's go take a look. And now if I hit refresh, you can start to see that products is starting to gain seconds there. That means that now there's been 13 seconds since the last time we requested it. And we can actually go over to our cursor and again, look at the terminal. We'll look at the API server. There's still a little space there. Hit refresh again. And we can see they're requesting all the products. We're not actually requesting the slash products route that gave us the list of products like we were before. So now we've taken our nine requests down to eight requests. So let's see if we can do better. Let's cache the product route. So let's go down here to get product. And again, we'll force cache, but this time we'll say that we want it every minute. So we'll give it 60 seconds. And now we can see that for the product routes, they're caching, but the price route continues not to cache. So we're getting this great granular control over the caching. Let's again, take a look at the API requests. We can refresh again, and we can see that now we're only making four requests and about a minute from now, if I were to hit refresh, I would go and get the products as well as the prices on the next refresh. All right, just to complete the example, let's go and fix the related products request and we'll set it to an hour. And this is the kind of ability that you get with the Next.js app router. You get the ability to granularly control the caching across the entire page, which is absolutely fantastic. Now the release of Next.js 15 not only changed the default caching behavior, but they've added a new experimental feature called Dynamic I.O., which makes caching even easier to control. We'll get into that after I tell you about my course, pronextjs.dev. Go over there and sign up for the email newsletter today and you get access to two free tutorials, one on state management, one on performance management. And then if you buy the course, you get access to all of the materials, including a fantastic getting started section, which walks you all the way through all of the mechanics of the app router. You get a section on styling as well as how to structure your application and then into some advanced topics around caching, caching server actions. It is an amazing course. Just got completely updated to Next.js 15. Go check it out today at pronextjs.dev. All right, now before we take a look at Dynamic I.O. in action, I'll point you to our journey with caching. There's a link to that in the description right down below. And this will tell you how they came up with this new caching system and how to use it. But let's go take a look at it in action right now. So I'm going to start off with our 15 standard. I'm going to remove node modules and next. And then I'm going to cursorily copy 15 standard into 15 Dynamic I.O. And of course, you'll have access to that code up on GitHub. Now I'll go into 15 Dynamic I.O. Now, before we install it, I'm going to go over here to package JSON, and we are going to use the Canary version of Next. So I'll set that to Canary, we'll install, and down here it actually tells us that we're out of sync with the React version. So I'm going to take that version and replace the ones that are in there. 
and do another install. Okay, now we've got the right packages. I would need to set the experiment flag on, so I'm gonna go to next config, and then inside of there, experimental, and then I'll turn on dynamic IO. All right, let's start it up, and we'll hit refresh, and we can see that it kind of looks the same, but we do get an error. And the error is interesting. What it's telling us is that there is some request for dynamic data in the application that doesn't use either a use cache or get wrapped in a suspense. So what does all that mean? Well, it means that we're not going to use the parameters to fetch anymore to specify that we want caching. We're gonna use this use cache directive. So let's go and grab that, go into our code, and let's take a look at how we would cache some of these requests. So over in Git products, we're gonna get rid of the fetch cache, and then right at the top of this function, we're gonna use use cache. And that's just going to tell Next.js that we just want that function to be cached. No matter what that function is doing, it could be doing database calls, it could be doing anything dynamic, and Next.js is going to cache it. So how long is it gonna cache it for? Well, we can use the cache life function to define how long we want it cached for. So we invoke cache life, and then we can do a couple of different things. But one is we can give it a profile name. And we can give it a profile name of, say, hours. And that tells Next.js that we want this cached for hours. Now, where is cache life defined? Well, cache life comes in from next cache, but it's actually called unstable cache life. So we're just going to change that to cache life, and there you go. So where do those profiles come from? Well, if we go and take a look at the documentation page, for cache life, we can see that here are the standard defined profiles. There's hours, minutes, seconds, days, weeks, and you can see the stale time, or validate time, and expire time. You can also define your own profiles. In the Next.js config, you can say, in this case, for example, bi-weekly, or you can go and just give it an object that says, here's the time to stale, to revalidate, and to finally expire. All right, so let's try this out. So I'm gonna go back to our application. Now we can see the products is actually caching, but so are the product routes. And I think that's because the fetch caching is still allowed in this dynamic IO system. So let's go and change out the other caching. So we'll get rid of the get product caching from fetch. And we'll say that we want minutes there. For get price, we won't do any caching at all. I'll show you how to do that in just a second. But for get related products, we're going to do hours again. Now you can also use use cache at the module level, just like at the top of the file. If you want to apply the caching to all of the functions in that module, we don't want to do that here because we want to keep the get price function not cached. All right, so let's hit refresh again. And so we can see that we still get that error. And that's because get price has no cache on it. And so when you have something that doesn't have a cache, you have to wrap it in a suspense. So where do we actually call get price? Well, we have a component called price that calls get price. So let's go and wrap that in a suspense. So instead of having it be the default, I'm going to have an implementation component here. And then I'm going to export a new function called price that wraps that implementation component in a suspense. So let's bring in suspense. Let's save. And now we can see that we no longer get an error, but everything is cached the way we want it to be. Slash products is cached out to an hour, slash product is cached just to a couple of minutes or so, and then the price is not cached at all, which is really cool. If we go and take a look at the API, we can actually see that in real life. There we go, hit refresh, and here we go. We just are getting the price because everything else is cached. So easy. Now check this out. So having used suspense, we get a really cool side effect. So if I go over to the API and I slow down that price endpoint. So if I go here, I've got a set timeout on it and I'm going to set that to a 2000 second timeout, which means the price is now really slow. It takes two seconds to get the price. So let's hit refresh on that. And we can see that because they're in suspenses, we get that loading effect, and that comes for free in this new architecture. And that wasn't handled in the older caching architecture because we use that suspense, we get that ability to handle slow loading requests for free. It's really cool.
So as you can see, this is a much easier cache to use. You just use use cache, give it a cache life. You can also use cache tag and revalidate those tags. Now, one last thing, I do wanna get into one really fine grain detail, and that's that there actually is another small cache in there, which is a per request cache. So every time you are building out a page, you're getting a page request, there is a cache around fetch. And so if you make the same get request to the same URL within the same request, you will not make the request multiple times. You only make the request once. And to demonstrate this, I'm gonna go back over to products and we're gonna replace the contents of get price. Now there's actually another endpoint called prices and prices returns the list of all of the prices for all of the products. So we are going to take a request for a specific ID and then we're going to get all of the prices and pick out just the price for that ID. So get price is still gonna take an ID. It's just gonna call API prices, get all of the prices and then just return the price for that given ID. So without this fetch cache, we would expect this API prices to get called four times on the homepage because we're making four different requests for the prices. So let's see if that actually happens. Hit refresh. So you can see there that prices only gets called once and that's because within the context of a single request, it looks to see that, hey, the URL for prices is exactly the same as it was with these other requests and it's cached. And that's the same between 13 and 14 and 15. There is this request cache that really you shouldn't have to worry about at all. It's just there and it just works. And the reason that it's there is you'd want to be able to make requests like get price within the context of a component. And if the person puts multiple invocations, the same component that goes and get the same data in various places, you want to make sure that you don't make multiple requests within the context of a single request to the web server. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed this look at the Next.js 15 and the three different ways that it does data fetching and data caching with the different routers and also this dynamic IO stuff. I think it's fascinating stuff. I'd like to hear from you in the comments what you think about it. Meantime, of course, if you like the video, hit that like button. If you really like the video, hit the subscribe button and click on that bell. You'll be notified the next time a new blue collar coder comes out.